right, so we're back with Osiris Bali. Um, so recently, you know, we've been hearing a lot of build up about this new movie, Birth of a Nation, uh, that was written and, you know, basically funded by, by Nate Parker. Um, you know, Birth of a Nation is basically the story of the Nat Turner Rebellion, uh, a story that we've been wanting to hear for many, many years for Hollywood basically kind of just shunned the idea and chose not to fund it. So now the film has been, you know, independently funded and uh, received, you know, just great ratings at the Sunday's funeral, uh, festival when it was first debuted. Uh, Nate Parker, who's the co-producer and co-writer of this film, um, was basically involved in, a, in a, a, rape, a rape case that happened in 1999. A lot of people have been coming out saying, hey, you know, even though he was acquitted, you know, it was a white female, uh, one of his partners who actually co-wrote the film, uh, I guess joined in while he was having sex, and uh, they were, the woman was drinking that night, uh, according to like, you know, court documents. I think everybody was a little drunk that night. Uh, how drunk, you know, we only those individuals know. But a lot of people have been kind of uh, shedding more light on the rape case than the actual film. Um, Many people are upset with uh, Nate Parker as far as how he chose to address the issue. Um, but my question is, is the rape allegation, the, uh, the case in, in which he was acquitted of and proven to be innocent, is that more important than, than the black community or, or, or people in general seeing this film, uh, Birth of a Nation, the story of the Nat Turner Rebellion? I mean, <clears throat> I mean that's I leave that up to the to the viewers. Uh, that's at the viewers' discretion. What's more important, a case that he was acquitted of, a rape case that he was acquitted of, or possibly seeing a film that uh, historically has been left out of our culture? You know. Um, I think one thing, you know what I'm saying, it's not a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy that these facts are coming up as he's about to debut his first major internationally distributed film. When you, um, when you get into the spotlight, people are going to dig in to your past and try to find out as much as they can about you. You know, uh, that's just the way it is. Anytime I watch a movie, anytime I listen to some new music or whatever, I go to the credits. First thing I do, go Google. I like that actress. I like that actor. Google. And Google going to bring up the most prominent things that have happened in, in your life, the most pivotal moments in your life. They're going to bring it up. And... Now we find out about a case that happened 17 years ago with Nate Parker. I mean, up until the end, up, I mean, uh, until now, the biggest moments in his life have probably been the Red Tails and the Great Debaters. As far as like, as a whole, what we know about him. Now he's actually starring in a movie that he's co-wrote, directed, funded, and featured at the Sundance Festival, now we hear all this stuff about him, and that's just what happens. That's what happens every time that you, anytime you have a milestone in your life, people are gonna bring up the other things that happen in your life. You know, when you get drafted into the NBA, oh, this player, he dealt with so much hardship early on, his mother was addicted to drugs, his, he, he didn't make his junior varsity basketball team, he had to fight his way through school because his grades and his academics weren't right. They're going to tell your whole story when you reach that milestone. It's not a conspiracy. It's just a Google search. <laughs> That's all it is, man. But do you want to see the film or not? That's up to your choice. I'm almost tired of arguing with people about their morals and what they want to do. Because at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want to do. When you got an affinity for someone or when you love someone, you forgive them quicker for the things that they've done wrong. 
How do I know this? Because how many times have we heard about pastors doing crazy stuff to people and the members in their church and they don't lose their entire congregation? Eddie Long. I was shocked when I seen a video this week of this dude and he had a church, he had this uh, sermon going on in church and he still had a big congregation. Nobody cares about the fact that he did whatever he did to those boys, you know? Ben Roethlisberger, how many times, he had a couple of rape cases. Did that stop the Steelers fans from rooting for him? Did it stop the Lakers fans from rooting for Kobe? Did it stop people from going to go see Woody Allen films? When they said that he molested his stepdaughter and married his, uh, his wife's adoptive daughter. Seek, well, not his wife, I'm sorry. They had a long-term affair, but it was 12 years. So, you know, in the eyes of most people, that's like common law marriage. Roman Polanski was dating 15-year-old girls, got accused of raping a 13-year-old girl, was caught by Jack Nicholson's wife. <laughs> well, not caught in the act, but caught with the girl, and later on the next day, the girl uh, said that she had been raped. And didn't stop people from praising him in Hollywood. In Hollywood he he's, he's protected. <laughs> yeah, he's in France. They, 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 won't even, they won't even let the U.S. come over there and get him. You know what I'm saying? R. Kelly, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? On tape with women, on tape with young girls, currently supposedly dating a 19-year-old girl, which is legal, but people question how long he's been seeing this girl. But it's been seen in history what he's done with young girls and the stories. Of, I, know, I know girls that grew up in Chicago and tell stories about how he used to pull up to the high school and all that type of stuff. But it ain't stopped him from getting concert after concert sold out. You know, so people forgive people when they love somebody. And a lot of the people that's in his corner right now, they love him and support him. That was a mistake he made 17 years ago. He says it was consensual. We don't know. All we know is, I know one thing, he seems a little insensitive in his response in interviews about the situation. I know the girl commit, supposedly uh, committed suicide, I believe, in 2012 or whatever. And her brother is saying that, uh, a, a lot of the, the downfall of her mentally came from being shunned away from the Penn State community, having to law, give them a lawsuit and everything. So uh, he probably should answer his questions about that case, be a little bit more sensitive with the topic because the girl is no longer here to defend herself. He co-wrote the film with a guy who actually was convicted of raping the girl then went back and had the case uh, appealed and, and the conviction was overturned. But originally he was convicted of it. So he needs to be a little bit more sensitive because the guy he specifically chose to write this film with, they both had a role in this. So that's why it's coming to light. But don't try to sit there and say, oh, it's only coming out because of what he's trying to do. Man, it's a movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He is not finna become president of this movie he will not take control of hollywood from this movie you know what i'm saying this is just his movie and so i mean come on man you know what I'm saying there's, there's been films about revolutionary people before and when it happens it happens and then once it's done it's done denzel washington did uh did a film about stephen biko you don't even hear about that anymore but go look up stephen biko Found out, find out what type of revolutionary he was in Africa. You know what I'm saying? But it's just coming to light because this is a pivotal, pivotal moment right now in his life. Now, it's a milestone. Now, let me ask you, because uh, I've been seeing a lot of black women, you know, show uh, you know, show their anger and uh, their disappointment, you know, towards towards Nate Parker, you know, for this for this case, you know. That happened uh, back in back in the days in Penn State. There's been a lot of women, black women, to to join, stand up, you know, for all the women, even though this was a white woman that was, you know, allegedly raped or whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, they stood up mm -hmm. uh, and said, "Hey, this is wrong." You know what I'm saying? When I when we look at this case, we see ourselves. Yeah. Uh, at the same at the same time, even though this case took took place almost 20 years ago. You know, black women are standing up. We don't very seldom do we see 
that same response from white women or white feminists in defense of you know black women? Do you have any do you have any particular take on on uh, on black women standing up you know for the white women and and the lack of response uh, that the white community or white feminist community has had cases in McKinney, McKinney Texas. Sandra Bland, we've seen, you know, our Scott sisters, our, our sister in Florida shot the Warner shots. Uh, mm -hmm. We 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 haven't seen a, a lot of them voice, you know, their their, you know, just be active in, in, in voice of for justice or whatnot. Do you think that's you know by design, or do you think you know a case like this is just it's just bigger, bigger than everything, you know, uh, completely? You know? Well, you know, what I'm saying that's something that black people do. Regardless, we when we are, when we feel for someone or we see something wrong and we feel connected to that type of incident, we speak out. We don't we don't care whether it's a Hispanic, a Caucasian, an Asian. If we see something wrong and we feel passionate about it, we speak up uh, about it. That's what we don't see in other races a lot of times because a lot of times other races kind of solely focus on what's going on in their community and in their culture. Us as black people, we connect to so much more outside of our community because a lot of times we're forced to deal with individuals outside our community a lot of times. And so it's not surprising that a lot of people don't speak up for us, but we speak up for them, especially in a case like this right here. Like a lot of black women have dealt with molestation and being raped. And when they and, and when they see something like this going on and it's being covered up, it's a reminder of the things that have been covered up in their lives. You know what I'm saying? It's no, it's no, I'm not surprised at the backlash of women that feel like they shouldn't support his film because of the simple fact that of, of the act he supposedly committed. Because for some reason in our community, and it's sad, we go out of our way a lot of times to protect the individuals that we love that commit these heinous crimes. You know what I'm saying? That's just something that we have go that's been going on for, for centuries with us, especially in the case of rape and molestation, especially in the case of we got a man who's somewhat young, maybe good looking, considered good looking to some, uh, some girls, and we almost excuse the fact that, that you're an, an authority figure or an adult in the situation and you give in to a child's consent. Even if they, uh, this child's a teenager on the verge of becoming a woman and looking like a woman, we, we almost excuse the fact like, oh man, well, well, it, 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 she just wanted to do it because she wanted she wanted it too. It wasn't just him. And we're, so we get into this thing about victim blaming and victim shaming. And, and it hurts women that grow up like that in those situations to be held accountable next to somebody who is an adult. And vice versa in the, in the same stance with, with, um, with women who mess with younger boys. You know what I'm saying? The only time... You know what I'm saying? We, we see that we see those type of situation with boys and, and older women, and we like, ah, oh, he was trying to do that. Don't blame her. Don't blame her. He was trying to do that. The only time that we seem to have sympathy for somebody, uh, sympathy for the victim, a lot of times, is when the, uh, the attacker is a serial offender. A lot of times we don't, con we don't, we don't, we don't seem to understand the, uh, the magnitude of a rape or a molestation until it's done repeatedly. Then that person seemed like a savage because, oh, he's a serial rapist. Oh, he's been touching on kids for years. He's constantly been dealing with these accusations. But when it's one time, two times, like, you know, uh, Oh, it's an uncle that does something to a child. It's an aunt that does something to one of her nephews or something like that. We we don't we don't like oh you know she she made a mistake he made a mistake we ain't trying to send him to prison for that. But guess who remembers that the victims and a lot of times the black women are the victims of this. The black boys, you know, Africa Bambata. Come on now, 
You know what I'm saying? All these people defend KRS one defending Africa Bambata. All these young men stepping forward. You know what I'm saying? But we love this person. Hold on now, don't don't say that about them. Hey, it was in the past. Why why are they talking about it now? It was 30 years ago. You were an adult 30 years ago. That's why they talking about it. You know what I'm saying? We don't dig into a child's past because a child does childish things. When you're an adult, you know what I'm saying? People want to hold you accountable, but we just refuse to lose the respect and love we have for certain individuals, and we give them a pass.